Hi, and welcome to Great Getaways. On today's show, we're going to take you to one of the most beautiful regions in the country when we travel to Michigan's Upper Peninsula. We'll be starting in the city of Sault Ste. Marie and following the waterway, the St. Mary's River and Whitefish Bay. And we're going to take it all the way up to the Whitefish Point Lighthouse. A lot of stops along the way, a lot of fun, a fall show I know you'll enjoy. Our guide for this week's adventure is Linda Houth. Linda is the director of the Sioux Area CVB. We've known Linda for a long time, and we knew this would be a fun time for all with her as our escort. Our adventure would start in Sault Ste. Marie with seven exciting stops that will include lots of interactive history, dinner and drinks, before moving away from the city for more Native American history and completing our journey at the largest falls east of the Mississippi and then Whitefish Point. This adventure begins with a stop at the museum ship Valley Camp, where you can actually go inside her massive cargo hold and explore an actual Great Lakes freighter. The Valley Camp has been here for the last 47 years. She was built in Lorraine, Ohio in 1917. As you can see from the expanse, she's 550 feet long. The Valley Camp itself basically was carrying coal. She would be picking up her coal, there would be 10,000 ton in three cargo holes. And the coal would be going down into the hatches and all the way down to the bottom. With the three cargo space being filled up, then she would latch on and button down the hatches and would head out on the Great Lakes. She did approximately five million miles in all of her lifetime. The museum ship Valley Camp offers more than just a tour of her deck. Housed inside her massive cargo holds is a 20,000 square foot museum with over 100 exhibits. But one of the main display area is that of the two lifeboats that came off the Edmund Fitzgerald. Two lifeboats, lifeboat number one split in half. She was split in half floating upside down. The Arthur M. Anderson spotted her and the Reich came over, picked it up and put it on duck. Afterwards also, lifeboat number two washed ashore over on the Ontario side at Mamains Point. They were able to recover it and bring it back here. After the investigation of the Edmund Fitzgerald, Captain Jimmy Hoba, also executive director of the Sioux Historic Site at that time, had the Valley Camp accommodating the two lifeboats from the Edmund Fitzgerald. Anybody that wants to come and see it, hey, mid-May to mid-October, seven days a week, it is the greatest and the biggest of all of the museums on the Great Lakes. And it's a place to see when you're in the Sioux. Soaring 210 feet above Sault Ste. Marie, the Tower of History has observation platforms for visitors to get a 360 degree view of the entire Sioux area from the Sioux Locks and the St. Mary's River to Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario and the Canadian Wilderness, more than 1,200 square miles. You will be whisked up an express elevator to get spectacular panoramic views of the city and several historic houses, as well as the world's busiest inland shipping channel as lake freighters and ocean-going vessels ply the St. Mary's River. With your camera, you can capture pictures of the boats or pan east for the museum ship Valley Camp and the historic hydroelectric power plant. Panning west, you will see the International Bridge and its unique movable span train bridge over the Upper St. Mary's. Be sure to spend time at the upper and lower level museum exhibits featuring the early missionaries and local and Native American history. Being avid fishermen, Tom and Denny were excited about our next stop at the Lake Superior State University Aquatic Research Lab at the Cloverland Electric Cooperative Hydroelectric Plant to see where students receive valuable hands-on experience in freshwater research and fish culture. In the hatchery itself, it's a cooperative arrangement between the Michigan DNR, Cloverland Electric, and Lake Superior State University. With that said, the university's prime interest in the fish hatchery production facility would be more of the hands-on training 
of our students to give them the actual field or, or lab work experience. So they're involved with everything from taking eggs to rearing these fish for a year and a half of their uh, the fish's life cycle. And then they are stocked into the St. Mary's River. Look at all those fingerlings, the future of fishing here. It looks really good. Nick Slight, a student at Lake Superior State University, explained why the success rate of this fishery was so much higher than anywhere else. What you're looking at here are all Atlantic salmon that we're raising here at our facility. There's about 5,000 fish in this raceway. We hold our fish for a year and a half before we release them. So in each raceway, you can see there's all the fish. The water comes in at the top end of the raceway over here, and then we'll flow through. And down at this end, there's a metal grate that you can see right here. The water's going out that metal grate and straight into the river. Look at all those salmon. It is so incredible, the amount of fish that are in the Sioux area. From the water to the land, it was time to leave the fish behind and chase down some antlers. Nearly everyone who says they visited the Sioux is asked, did you go to Antlers? Welcome to the Antlers! The Antlers restaurant is a legendary landmark across from the south end of the Sioux Locks, serving northern cuisine at lunch and dinner with a great family atmosphere. There are more than 200 mounted animals inside. We've got everything, just about every animal from North America and a few that are not. Um, it's been 60 plus years acquiring different animals. We get the question a lot of, uh, you know, did somebody hunt all these? And, and sure, somebody did at some point, but it wasn't any of the owners. It was all a collection over the years. Some of the stories go that, that people were able to pay their, their bill, their beer tab or their food tab with a mount. So a lot of bartering going on over the years. When you visit Antlers, you'll be intrigued by its legends and all of the incredible taxidermy specimens. Most of all, you can enjoy a great meal with family or friends with food in the up north tradition. What is it like to be carried through the Sioux Locks? You can experience it for yourself by taking the Sioux Locks boat tour. Head over to one of the two docks on Portage to climb aboard the Le Voyager or one of the other boats for a cruise or a dinner cruise through the Sioux Locks. Our old friend Richard Brawley, owner of the Sioux Locks Boat Tours, spent the evening with us, filling us in on some lesser known facts about the area. Give us an idea of what goes on with these cruises. Some, what is it like for everybody that goes out on? Well, we have the uh, one we're on now is our dinner cruise, and it we're down river. The first part of it, we load and uh, head down the St. Mary's River, and you can see the beautiful scenery in the islands. And we serve a, a nice dinner. It varies from what day of the week you're on, and then it goes back up into our regular lock tour, and we give the full narration as far as the history of the Sioux, one of the oldest cities in the country. And then we go into the lock tour we, where we describe any vessels that are going through with the length, the width, their cargo, where they're going, and that sort of thing. And then into the locks, which is the the main event, so to speak, because everybody loves to see how that works. There's locks all over, but not this big that handle thousand foot freighters and that sort of thing. So we tell people how they, they operate. Uh, then we go up in the upper river and we head over towards Ogoma Steel, a working steel mill in, in Canada. The Sioux Locks Tour is an experience to remember. It's a maritime adventure that is both educational and a lot of fun. The regular season cruises run from mid-May to mid-October with some pre- and post-season runs for groups. Happy cruising, everyone! A sailor's thirst can be quenched at the Sioux Brewing Company, Sioux, Michigan's first craft brewery. I will say this about our tap lineup. It's like a river, it's constantly changing. We brew three times a week, we try to bring three new beers up every week. We have 10 taps, right now we only have five up because people have been drinking it about as fast as we can make it. You will want to hang out perhaps for a pint and a slice, making memories of your visit to the Sioux. For an indoor diversion and some great gaming fun, Kewaden Casinos in the Sioux is the place to go. Whenever you're in Michigan's UP, you're never far from a Kewaden Casino experience. Whether you're staying on the premises or dropping in for entertainment, you'll be captivated by the bright lights and the cha-chings coming from winnings at the slot machines. 
If you prefer, there are also table games, bingo, and kino in the casino. From live entertainment to gaming promotions and events, there's always something going on at Kuwaitin. Traveling west of the Sioux, you will be in for some spectacular views, especially when you reach the turnoff for the Mission Hills Spectacle Lake Overlook. You will have to drive a steep, tall, narrow roadway to the top, but when you arrive at the parking area and see Spectacle Lake some 300 feet below, you'll be thankful you came. Oh, Tom, this is a great place. Take a look at the color around us. This is oh. the Mission Hill. You know, and it has, you can just look over top and you can see all the fall color, the lakes, you know, and then the river. And I said, and even yeah. from here, you might get lucky to see a lake freighter. I'll bet you could because off in the distance, that's Canada. That's Canada. That's, yeah. That is Canada. <laughs> yeah, it's great. I, and it's one of my favorite. It's quiet. It's peaceful. It's just a great place to come. You get the colors out here. What a magnificent sight it is to come up here and look around. We've also got something else up here. Yeah, Mission Hill Cemetery. It's a historical cemetery. We'll have to go in and take a look, I said, because, you know, we're such a maritime history up here. We've got a little bit of maritime mystery in the cemetery. Probably that was put up here then because of the beauty of the area? Yes, it was. And you got a lot of Native American. It's, it's a very, very um, important place for them, too, so to come. All right. Well, let's go in there and take a look. But don't forget, you got to come up here just to look out right here. Well, Linda, this is a beautiful cemetery, and it, it, some of these grave sites have got uh, dates on them going back a long way. Over 150 years. Now, we've got uh, Native Americans, local people, as well as sailors that have been through the area. This is one where they found eight of them on the shore after, you know, after the winter months, but it's like we have it here and they have a memorial to it. And you know what? It, it's a kind of a mass grave site, and they don't know any of their names or anything, do they? No, no, and it's just, you know, they know that there was eight sailors here. It's really interesting to look and read some of these gravestones that are here, just to get an idea of some of the dates and some of the people that are actually buried here. And some of them are so old, you can't even read the names anymore. And there's some in the way in the back that are unknown, but they know they're their grave site. Beautiful area. Yeah. Let's take a walk. Okay, let's do that. I love coming up here in the fall. I say, you know, it's so peaceful it and quiet. Is. You hear a little rustle of the trees. Along Lakeshore Drive and Bay Mills is a more ancient old Indian burial ground. Well, this is an area that's sacred to the Native Americans, and because of that, it's closed to the public. But you can come up here along the fence and view into the cemetery itself. You notice all the little huts that are out there, and that's how they used to bury them. They would put uh, some of their belongings, they might put tobacco, or they might put their favorite knife, or whatever is it that they wanted to take to their next life. And they would put them in the tops of these. They believe the spirit then went up and would take these things with them. A unique feature of this preserved site is that many descendants of the families buried here still reside in Bay Mills. As you continue traveling along the scenic Lake Superior shoreline, the Point Iroquois light station comes into view. Whether travelers were in birch bark canoes or aboard a lake freighter, this unique piece of Iroquois Point was important to them. Today, when you visit the Lighthouse Museum, their stories and the stories of the light keepers and their families are revealed through photographs, antiques, and artifacts. Climb the 72 steps to the top of the tower for a picturesque view of Lake Superior. Visitors can always enjoy a walk along the cobblestone beach in search of agates, but don't forget to look up and out over the lake to catch sight of the freighters. Perhaps the most well-known lighthouse is the Whitefish Point Light Station. This was one of the first lighthouses to stand guard over the entrance to Whitefish Bay sometimes the only shelter for sailors trying to escape Lake Superior's fury. We are going to the top of the tower. I've never been here before, so this is really exciting, but uh, we gotta go up these stairs again, so it's gonna be a little haul. Come on along. We're standing at the top of the Whitefish Point Lighthouse right now. We're outside, we're looking around. We've got a beautiful day, thank God, for being up here. <laughs> and I've got Terry with me, and Terry is the, uh, the manager for this area right here. Right. And maybe you could tell us a little bit about it and some of the buildings that are here and, and what its future is going to bring. 
Well, the, we're located on the historic property of the Whitefish Point Light Station. So originally there was a lighthouse establishment here, and then later on in the 1920s, the Coast Guard added a rescue station. So there are some of the other buildings were from the 1923 Coast Guard Rescue Station that was here. Now, I understand there's a lot of shipwrecks out here. One of the reasons the lighthouse is here to begin with is, is how treacherous it is. That's exactly right. The lighthouses were put here to prevent shipwrecks. And then the, uh, the life-saving station was put here to rescue people from shipwrecks. And now, now we have a shipwreck museum up here because there were lots of shipwrecks still. But they all work really well together because the, uh, the shipwrecks have helped us to restore these other buildings. So it works really, and the stories just intertwine beautifully. And these are the kind of stories, though, that people can learn about in the museum? Correct. You go to the museum and there'll, there'll be displays on each of the shipwrecks. There'll be a few artifacts from them from the from bygone days, and there'll be images. So we've, we've tried to restore the uh, stories with some enough graphics to make it easy to understand. Now, right now, since 1984, all the artifacts on the bottom of the Great Lakes are protected in the state of Michigan. So we encourage divers to go take pictures, take video. The cameras are really cheap nowadays and really good. And uh, you can take lots of pictures and video, but don't take things off the rest. Well, obviously, it's easy to get lost in these kind of stories and stuff, but we're going to take a minute and have you look around. This is a beautiful outlook here. It is hard to imagine the fury of the lake when looking out over calm waters lapping against the sandy shore that goes for miles. Take off your shoes and let the sand get between your toes as you look for banded agates or other beautiful stones, or just enjoy the magic of Lake Superior. A visit to the Whitefish Point Light Station and Shipwreck Museum is both fascinating and humbling. Just a few miles from Whitefish Point, you'll find another UP treasure, the Taquamanan Falls. Noted in poem and song, you too may be inspired by the thunderous upper falls and adventurous lower falls of the Taquamanan River. Teresa Neal, the park naturalist, shares the story of the falls with Tom. Taquamanan Falls is the second largest state park in Michigan, right behind the Porcupine Mountains. We have about 48,000 acres here at our park, wow. of which 20,000 or so is considered a natural area, which means that there's no motorized vehicles allowed in that okay. section of the park. A lot of people come to the park to see the Upper Falls, which is the largest waterfall in Michigan at 50 feet tall and 200 feet wide. Usually there's a maximum flow rate in the spring of around 45,000 gallons per second wow. that go over the Upper Falls. That's so a lot of water. Year round, it's a really interesting place to visit. At the Upper Falls, it is considered to be a climax or an old growth forest. And uh, what that means is during the logging days of the 1880s, it was not harvested. So the lumberjacks of the 1880s to about 1900 in the eastern Upper Peninsula did not harvest the Upper Falls area. However, we did get an invasive species on our beech trees about 10 uh. years ago. And so we did have to cut some of the big old growth trees in the uh. Upper Falls, unfortunately. Just the American beech tree, we have beech bark disease at the Upper Falls. The Lower Falls, which is where we're at right now, is open during the non-snowy months. Uh, this is where the campground is, and uh, the amenities such as the rowboat rental and hiking trails are pretty popular here as well. Now, can people bring boats in and get them into the river and things? They do. There are a couple of ways that you can actually access the river on your boat. One is here at the Lower Falls, and the other spot is at the river mouth. The Taquamanon River is very popular for fishing, recreational boating, and kayaking and paddling. Well, we do a lot of hiking, and I know you've got some great hiking trails mm -hmm. here. We mentioned that already, but how long are they, and, and what will we see along the way? Sure. Some of our most popular hiking trails are along the North Country Trail, and the North Country oh. National Scenic Trail is a 4,600-mile trail, but actually about 35 miles of it go through the park. So we get quite a few through hikers as well as day hikers that hike between, say, the Upper and Lower Falls is the most popular trail in the park. It's called the River Trail. It's five miles. It's pretty rugged but it's definitely the most beautiful. Mm. Follows the river um, up and down. Oftentimes folks might see otter or signs of beaver for sure. Uh, the occasional uh, deer will come through there. People have seen black bear here at the top of the lower falls. So oh. there are viewing opportunities if you're in the right place at the right time. Part of my job here at Taquamanon is to do free educational programs for the public. So we do all sorts of things from bear den hikes to snowshoe excursions. In the winter, we do a lantern lit ski trail. Um, and we offer programs seven days a week from Memorial Day to Labor Day for our campers and our day use visitors. And then usually on the weekends in the off season. So it's a, it's a, it, it enhances folks' experiences by coming to the park and taking part in a nature program. Taquamanon Falls the place where the sound of rushing water releases your inner stresses. 
With more than 40,000 acres to explore, you'll want to come back often. The historic village of Grand Marais boasts warm summers, beautiful autumns, and snowy winters for a year-round recreation destination. You may be surprised to find this remote village as you travel the southern shore of Lake Superior, but it is one of the oldest place names on the Great Lakes. There is a wonderful pier in Grand Marais where anglers catch whitefish, menominee, and lake trout. Now this <laughs> channel behind us is uh, always with boats coming and going in the summertime. And it's just fun to be down here to watch and be a part of. We have the sailboats, fishing boats, and okay. uh, water skiers. All kinds of things coming in here. Uh, you got a beautiful beach over there too. Oh, we do. And you know, it's such fun to look down at that beach. The friendly, small-town atmosphere is found when you visit the establishments in town, like Lake Superior Brewing Company. Well, Dave, when we came in, I asked you what would be a good beer, and you happened to, you mentioned this one that I'm drinking right now, and this is something that you kind of created on yourself, isn't it? Yes, this is my recipe. Uh, it's an English-style bitters um, that I created the recipe for, and I haven't, uh, uh, you know, we really didn't join too many, you know, contests or anything like that. A lot of people mm -hmm. send their stuff out for, but uh, this one I wanted to see if, you know, since it was my beer, I wanted to see. And I won a silver medal in our category, but actually it was the highest silver handed out and they didn't hand out any gold medals in that category. Wow. And I was like a half a point from a gold. This is the place to be when you're in Grand Marais. You will enjoy the unique atmosphere steeped in the history of a harsh environment and life in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. The North Country Trail runs through Grand Marais and brings you to the Sable Falls and Grand Sable Dunes. The Sable Falls are in a remote area at the easternmost end of the Pictured Rocks Park. As you hike the short, well-marked trail to the falls, you will hear their refreshing sound as they tumble 75 feet over a number of small cliffs on the way to Lake Superior. As you walk along the trail, you'll come to the first viewing platform, down a staircase with 169 steps. Spend a little extra time at the viewing platforms to capture photos of the falls you will think each view is more beautiful than the last. The trail continues past the falls and down the canyon. Take your time enjoying the walk through the woods. It is about a half mile to the beach as Sable Creek winds its way to Lake Superior. Well, this is it. This is where the mouth of this little river ends up, right here on Lake Superior. Started in the Grand Sable Lake, came over to the falls, rapids through here. And you, I, it's hard to tell as you're walking along, but this cut right through the dunes that are out here. And if you look down the shoreline from it, you'll see these huge dunes down there. That's where the rollaways that we've heard about today that uh, are at down that way. Some of these areas go up as high as 200 feet. So it's uh, big sand dunes, not the kind you're going to climb up and down, okay? Is that great or what? If you would like to learn more about the Sault Ste. Marie and Eastern Upper Peninsula after watching today's show, order a free information packet from the contact information on your screen. Also, let us know what you thought about today's show by visiting our website and filling out the form. While there, be sure to make use of the travel planner we put together for you. There are videos, pictures, and links for area information to guide you to the great places we brought you today. Your online adventure will be just the start of your next great getaway. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's autumn tour in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Remember, if you'd like more information, you can get it at our website at greatgetaways.tv. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.